So the Honor 50 is a phone that represents a company finally breaking free and becoming independent from its mother company, Huawei, who for years now had stopped Honor from shipping phones to Europe and America with Google Play services and Snapdragon chips because of the US security ban. Well, that is no longer the case, and to celebrate, Honor have stuffed this thing with as much Google bloatware as possible to really show you it's back. For now. But I've got to be honest and say this phone feels like it's been rushed on the software side of things. It's very rough around the edges and using it out and about in the daytime has led me to being in a few awkward and annoying situations. So this is just my personal experience and always I will talk about the good and the bad. Let's get into it. So at the time of recording this video, the Honor 50 hasn't got an official European price, but based on pricing in China, which is always a little bit less than the rest of the world, I would assume that this will cost around 440 to 480 euros. So the phone I've been using is the global version of the Honor 50 running Android 11, so it has full access to the Google Play Store, and most importantly, Google Play services, so it can run and have access to all your favorite apps. So if you are worried about Honor phones being limited, then this is no longer the case. And to prove it, there's an entire folder of official Google Apps pre-installed on the phone that you can't delete. Come on. So on first glimpse, phone in hand, this feels pretty damn good. It has a real premium air about it, and if I picked it up in a shop, I would definitely assume that this was in the more upper tier category. It has a nice build quality, and the curved screen looks very sleek. A little more curved than recent Samsung and OnePlus phones, but it's nice. Although one downside is that sometimes it does take a few attempts to use those swipe back gestures. The screen itself is a 1080p OLED display and looks great. It has nice colors, not the brightest in the world, but it gets bright enough. And most importantly, it has a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So you get all that nice buttery scrolling and swipe action. It is a dynamic refresh rate. So you have the option to choose if you want it fixed to 120 Hertz, drop it down to 60 or set it to dynamic to have the mixture of the two and save battery life. The rest of the phone is made from aluminum and I think glass or at least a mixture of glass and plastic. And it's just very easy to hold. The Honor 50 is noticeably thin and light. And for one handed use, this is really nice. So if you struggle holding a bigger phone and still want a fairly large screen, then this 6.57 inch display might be pretty good for you. There are two sets of buttons on the side, the power button and the volume rocker. Both feel okay, nice and clicky. Although if you lightly run your fingers over both, there is a wobble to them, which kind of brings down the premium feel a little, but that's the only negative I found in build quality. The color and finish is subjective, let's say. Now I actually think the other color options look nice and there are plenty of other options to choose from. The one that Honor sent me is a little Gucci, a little fanboy. I like the camera module. It's actually something a little bit different from Honor with those double metal rings. It's got a kind of jewelry fashion effect to it. Although it does look quite similar to a certain Huawei phone, which Honor has absolutely nothing to do with now. You do also get an under display optical fingerprint scanner that looks and acts very similar to the, to the, to the um, Huawei fingerprint scanner. Yes, that's it. And then finally at the bottom, there is no headphone jack, but you do get a SIM card tray, USB-C port, and a single firing speaker, which has been fine. So running the Honor 50 is a mid-range Snapdragon 778G, which does have the power to crush most high intensive games. Asphalt 9 ran fine and smoothly on the highest settings with zero problems and Call of Duty Mobile was great and actually during my COD session the phone didn't heat up at all. I was sitting there waiting for it to happen and it just stayed nice and cool which really surprised me. Now usually this is the part of the video where I talk about the phone's everyday performance in navigating around the OS, loading apps, RAM management, all of that kind of stuff and for the most part it's been a little rough. This is hard to show because I've been using this phone for a week, so things just happen on the fly, but it's not been the smoothest experience. There are times where it takes a few clicks to open up apps, timeline stutters on Instagram and Twitter, and there's been a fair bit of lag in the camera app. 
Now this phone has been released in China for a couple of months now. You can go out here and buy it and obviously at the time of recording this video, this is technically pre-release for Europe. So I'm gonna give it a bit of leeway, but it has had more bugs and moments of lag than I expected it would. And all of this I'm pretty sure has something to do with the particular variant I have, which is the 128 gigabytes of storage and six gigs of RAM model. And I think the RAM hasn't been optimized well enough because six gigabytes is kind of standard on Android phones and it should be more than enough. But there have been occasions where I've got some really bad freezes where an entire app is completely unresponsive. And it's led to some pretty awkward moments for me. I was in a taxi trying to pay for the ride and the whole phone just froze up and there was nothing I could do except reset everything. And I was apologizing apologizing to the driver and all the other cars behind were honking their horns and I just couldn't pay, it was super awkward. Now, it's been such a long time since RAM has been an issue for me, I didn't even think to manage the apps by closing them, but eventually I realized that's what I had to do to make sure I didn't get any freezes. Now this might be a problem with just my phone, so for sure go out and check some other reviews just to make sure, or if you own one of these six gigabyte models, or if you buy one in the next week, please drop a comment for everyone to see. Now, cameras. I will get to cameras in a moment, but this leads me to another annoyance that happened with this phone. I spent a whole day out in a beautiful location testing this camera system to try and get some nice looking samples for you guys in daytime and in low light. I had photos, videos using all the different lenses and settings, and then when I got home, this phone did an automatic software update. And perhaps I didn't read the update properly, maybe I wasn't concentrating, but it completely reset the Honor 50 to its factory settings and I lost everything. So I had to quickly go out again and shoot some more pictures and videos. They are not as pretty and photogenic, but let's just jump into this quad camera setup. That consists of a 108 megapixel main lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, a 2 megapixel bokeh camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. So the main sensor is 108 megapixels. And if you want to access all of those pixels, you have to go into a special high resolution mode that is buried in the camera's settings. 108 megapixels pixels does give you a lot more detail compared to the standard shooting mode. Like with most phones, there is an exposure drop off and it does take a little longer for the phone to take the picture and process it, but it will allow you to do more with the picture if you want to crop in or even print out the photos into a larger format. But I do think if you're not cropping in and looking for more detail, then the standard mode does look like the more appealing shot. Shooting in the normal mode with the main sensor is fine. Nothing revolutionary in this price category. In good light, it takes decent images and will be fine for most people wanting to take a quick snap here and there. Although the phone does request you to hold the phone steady after you take the shot for a few seconds so it can apply sharpening, which is a bit annoying. But overall, no complaints about the main sensor sensor and actually at night I thought it performed pretty well. There is a dedicated night mode on here that takes a four second exposure and I was pretty happy at how the images came out. More impressed actually than in the daytime. I think these pictures look absolutely great. These are all unedited straight out of the camera and even in really really low light situations the camera was able to expose enough of the scene to make the photo just about usable. Then there is the 8 megapixel ultra wide that even in good light struggles to take a clean image. Every shot I tried, there was a lot of blur and imperfections, and overall it was a little disappointing. There is also no night mode, and if we compare it to the main camera with night mode off, and then the ultra wide, there is such a massive loss of detail, focus, and color that it's really better if you didn't take a photo at all. The macro lens is two megapixels and allows Honor to say quad camera in their marketing. It takes okay pictures if you get the distance right, and the bokeh lens is also 2 megapixels and is fine and is also just a marketing tool. But let's talk about video because Honor has said this phone is an excellent vlogger's tool and there are some specific features built into the camera system to make vlogging more creative. Okay, so doing this video again for the second time. So this is the selfie camera. It's 32 megapixels. I'm currently shooting at 1080p 60 frames a second. It can't shoot 4K unfortunately. The limit is 1080p 60 frames. I'm actually in the wide setting right now. There is a one-time setting and a wide setting. 
This is what the one-time setting is like to get a bit more closer detail if you want, but I prefer the wide setting because for vlogging it's much better. And this phone is set up for vlogging. So one of the things that Honor are pushing in their marketing material is that this thing can shoot two angles of video footage at the same time. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is picture in picture mode where you can see what's in front of you, but still see me vlogging in the corner here. The quality looks like it's definitely been dropped down to 720 and it also looks a bit choppy. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is down to 720p. That's cool. Um, yeah, I don't think it looks that good in the viewfinder. So I guess if it doesn't look good to me on the viewfinder, it's not gonna look good how you're watching it in the final product. Okay, so I'm still walking around the park. Let's see if I can change it on the go, the angle. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So we've got two angles here. We've got a bit of a workout going on. We have the wide and I assume zoom lens going on at the same time. And I don't think it looks particularly good. Let's try and switch to another one. Okay, so we're back to the main sensor, which looks way better in 1080p 60 frames a second than it did on that multicam, which I assume was 720p at 24 frames a second because the quality did not look good and it looked very choppy. And in the settings, there didn't appear to be uh, any toggles to change the resolution or change the frame rate. So to be honest, Honor are trying to market this as a vlogging phone, a vlogging experience. And I just don't see that multicam setup as any help at all. I w certainly wouldn't put any of that footage on my own YouTube channel and I wouldn't advise you to either because the quality is just not good enough and this multicam thing has been on phones for a while now. Yes, now it's on a lower end phone, but the quality just isn't good enough. So for a vlogging phone, I think this picture now that uh, we're looking at at 60 frames a second at 1080p. This camera, 32 megapixels, sure. You could uh, vlog with this absolutely fine. On the wide angle here, you can see all around. It's good. But in terms of the multicam setup, not for me, I'm afraid. So the only thing I thought of that this multicam might be useful for is making a quick TikTok video. So let's say I wanna do an instruction video on how to do a little uh, quick edit on Final Cut. Then this could be used to see the face, see the instructions in front. Yeah, for the quality, that's it basically. 4K is fine when it's not glitching out and lagging. It only goes up to 30 frames per second. The stabilization is a little abrupt and jolty, but overall it's good enough. Nighttime is also okay if you don't take too many steps. A nice easy pan around is the best way to use the video mode on this phone at night. 1080p 60 frames per second is a little smoother and a little cleaner and I would probably prefer to use this over 4K. And I am so sorry for this building site that you're seeing. The original place I went to take these sample pictures and videos was so much nicer. So a quick few final things about this phone. Battery life has been okay. It's a 4300 cell and will last you a full day if you don't have any heavy gaming sessions and I think that will be enough for most people. There is also super fast wired charging. This will get you up to 70% in 20 minutes, which is great if you forget to top up your phone overnight. So should you buy this phone? Right now, I'm not sure I would. I would wait a couple of weeks, see what other people have to say, go look at other reviews, check for updates, go on the forums and go on Reddit and see if Honor pushes some software tweaks out. And you know, this could also be my bad luck. I know the hardware is there and it's solid. I just don't think it's been well optimized, like they were in a hurry to get this released on time or something. And also this is a pre-released phone. So if there are any improvements from my end, I will drop them in the comments. And please drop a comment and a like in this video yourself. It would really help me out. And a subscription to the channel would be fantastic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.